What's up, YouTube? Jeff back again from High on Android and DopeTechDaily.com. And today I'm bringing you guys my full review of the LG V10. Now, I know a lot of people have been waiting on this, and I apologize for the long wait. Basically, I was trying to wait for T-Mobile to push out a software update that fixes some of the issues that I've had with the fingerprint scanner. Now, if you guys didn't see my original coverage of the V10, I did several videos on it. One of it was one of the videos was about this case, the Incipio Dual Pro case, not working with the fingerprint scanner on the V10. I made a follow-up video as well showing that some other uh, cases don't work. And basically, AT&T has already pushed the update that fixes that, but T-Mobile has not. So I haven't been really using my scanner for that reason. You're going to hear me talk quite a bit about that. I just want to let everybody know I'm reviewing the phone I have. So I can't review an AT&T model because I don't have it. Um, obviously, I acknowledge that people have said the issue is fixed on their phone. But if you hear me talking about the problems I've had, that's the reason. So don't comment in the comments section saying it's fixed on AT&T. I'm well aware of that, uh, but it's not fixed yet on the T-Mobile variant. And that's the one that I'm reviewing. So I waited as long as I could for T-Mobile to push a software update, uh, but they just haven't done it yet. So I need to get this review out. So we're going to go ahead and do it. So that being said, let's get right into it. You guys know if you follow my channel, I like to keep a detailed Google Keep document with my review notes. You can see here. As with the Nexus 6P, I have quite a few things to say about the V10. So let's sort of try to go in the same order I went in the last video. I don't know if it'll be exact, but let's give it a try. So the first thing is the build quality. Now obviously you can see the LG V10 is a much different type of build quality uh, than the uh, Nexus 6P. If you're looking for the sleekest, sexiest looking, all metal, all glass phone, this is definitely not it. This has got a rugged design. You've got this grippy, uh, rugged texture on the back. It's a rubber. Uh, material. It's got sort of a nice, you can see it's got some grooves in there that gives you a nice grip. It's got some V10 branding right there. You've got the metal rails along the sides. As you can see right here, you've got the metal rails on both sides. It is a very tall phone. It's a pretty big phone, but definitely a really tall one. That has to do with the secondary display, which we'll get more into uh, later. Of course, you've got the dual camera on the front. You can see it's reasonably thick. Of course, it's easy to let that slide because here on the back, you've got a removable back cover. So of course, with the removable back, it's easy to let that slide. You can see you've got a removable battery, so you can switch out a battery. You've also got a micro SD slot up here where your SIM card goes. So it's a little thicker, of course, than the sexy flagships we're used to seeing in 2015. But there's for a good reason in the sense that you get the removable battery and the expandable storage. I think a lot of people can live with that. You got some LG branding here at the bottom, which is also some rubber. And overall, I don't have a problem with the build on this phone. I actually like it. Uh, it's definitely not the same type of phone in terms of the build as the Note 5 or 6P. So if you're looking for that sleek, all metal, all glass look, this is not the phone for you. But if you're looking for a rugged phone uh, that if you drop it a few times or, you know, as long as it's not on concrete, obviously, if you drop this phone a few times or you're really, really uh, harsh on your phone, you're not going to have any problems with the LG V10. Now, I rock this without a case the most of the time. And the only thing that really happened to mine, probably can't even see it, a piece of the rubber right here actually started peeling a little bit. I don't know if you guys can even see that on the camera, just right here at the corner. I rocked mine without a case the majority of time. That wasn't necessarily my choice. It's because the cases I bought, including this Incipio one, didn't actually work that well with the phone. So I rocked it without a case. Now I like the build. It's really not a bad build quality on this phone, but it's just not the same. So just keep that in mind. If you want a rugged phone, it's definitely the way to go. Uh, the, the removable back cover is great. Uh, one last thing I want to mention, I just saw here in my notes, the removable back cover does have a little bit of a gap. You can kind of see that too. So it feels like it doesn't quite sit flush on the sides and on the bottom. Some people have noticed that in the forums and also commented on my previous V10 videos. So it's not a huge deal, but if you're a perfectionist with your smartphone, you might not like the fact that the uh, back cover doesn't sit entirely flush. It doesn't feel too loose to me and I haven't really noticed it or had a problem at all. So that's my thoughts on the build. Uh, just a different type of phone overall. Not a bad build quality though, and I actually like the grippy texture on the back. Uh, the next thing are the speakers. So that was one of my favorite thing uh, about the Nexus 6P. If you remember, that was one of my favorite things. They have super loud front-facing dual stereo speakers. Now, that is not the case with the LG V10. The LG V10 speakers are absolutely terrible. Um, this is one of the worst speaker experiences I've had on a smartphone, to be honest with you. Just got this one tiny little speaker. It doesn't get very loud, um, even if you're comparing it to other smartphones, not necessarily to a Bluetooth speaker, obviously. It doesn't get very loud at all. And also, if you do turn it up to its max volume, 
the volume is so incredibly distorted that it's really hard to listen to media, which means uh, videos, but especially music. So if you're a music person and you want to listen to uh, tunes like Play Music, Spotify, Pandora, the speaker on this phone is really, really, really poor, uh, which is a shame because one of the things that LG was promoting about this phone was its ability to handle audio. Of course, the majority of that lies in the Hi-Fi audio DAC that we have inside the phone. So a lot of people are going to say, well, you would just, of course, want to use your headphones anyway when you're using this phone. And that's true. Um, for the most part, you do want to use your headphones because the speaker is so incredibly bad. So I'll talk a little more about the Hi-Fi DAC. You guys can see up here. If you go into the notifications, you can turn the Hi-Fi DAC on or off right there. You guys can see that uh, in your quick settings. And the Hi-Fi DAC performs amazingly. It's actually one of the big selling points of this phone. It's one of the reasons I would encourage someone to get this phone is if you're a huge music lover. Uh, but the speaker quality is just terrible. You drown out any highs and mids, uh, anything that sort of has any subtlety to your music, uh, unless you're listening to just something that's straight up uh, a really heavy bass, which I do like, but even I uh, found problems with this speaker when listening to hip hop. It's just in, very difficult to make out even uh, the words in a song at really high volume because of the distortion. All right, so the next thing is the screen quality. Now, obviously, the V10 does not have the same uh, level of poppy colors as the Note 5. I mentioned this when I did the Nexus 6P review. The Super AMOLED panels definitely have sort of more saturated colors, which some people like, and I really like them. But the LG V10 also has one of the best displays I've seen uh, in the sense that it's not the Super AMOLED panel, but it strikes a nice balance between some of the more washed out uh, LCD panels that I've seen and the Super AMOLED panels from Samsung and others. Now, this one has excellent viewing angles. Uh, it does get super bright outside as well. I had no problem seeing this one in the sun. I think that the LG V10 actually in terms of brightness in the direct sunlight uh, and viewing angles, I was able to see it better than the Nexus 6P. You can sort of see this one from mostly any angle that you want out in the sunlight. Even in the Arizona sun, no problem at all. It also has really, really nice colors considering it's an LCD panel. So the colors are really true to life. Uh, you get really beautiful colors. You can see sort of there on my wallpaper. And even on, you get really great detail uh, in the colors. So it's pretty fantastic for a display for an LCD display. I, of course, prefer a mullet. I've said that on many occasions. So, of course, I'm a little biased when it comes to that. But I really do like the panel that, uh, that LG put on this uh, display. It's their best panel ever uh, for sure. I still find the Note 5 and Edge Plus better in direct sunlight. That's because of the brightness boost. Uh, but I think, you know, since this is a subjective thing with display quality, what looks the best. I can definitely admit that LG gave us true um, color pre-production in the RGB sense that they did a good job of actually getting true to life colors and they're not overly saturated. So I think they strike a nice balance. And I think the V10 is sort of in the same category as the Nexus 6P where it gives you some pretty nice deep rich colors while also maintaining uh, that true to life uh, RGB spectrum that you get from the LCD display. So I have no complaints at all with the display. I'm still a little partial to the oversaturated colors. That's just because I like that. But if you like true color reproduction on your display, you're going to love the LG V10's display, and it's another big positive for this phone. Uh, of course, the other big thing that we've seen, you've seen the whole time I've been doing the review, is that secondary screen. So, of course, up at the top, you can see we've got the secondary ticker-like display, which was a big feature that LG pushed on this phone. It's one of the things that sets it apart from the other flagships of 2015. You can see you've got a personalized message there. You've got some favorite apps and quick settings. You can also take a quick memo. And then you've got your recently used apps there as well. So I've personally found the secondary screen to be incredibly useful. A lot of people have said that they don't see a use for it. But me personally, I like having to, the option to put my favorite apps up here at the top pinned here so that if I'm multitasking, you know, if I'm in one app like Hangouts, I can just jump to another app like YouTube Studio right away and then check some other things and then I can go to Instagram and you know it's, it doesn't take any extra time. Now the one downside to having it all the way up here of course is that you're gonna have to reach all the way up here. So again I mentioned this is a big phone. If you have a small hand this is gonna be difficult to reach and I certainly understand the complaints that people have had uh, for that reason. If you don't have a big hand, I have rather large hands so it's not a huge problem for me but if you have a smaller hand that's gonna get tiring and you're not gonna like the secondary display uh, for that reason. I also really like the fact that if you're in a game or you're in some sort of app, like say I'm in MathRef and I get a notification, right? Say I'm reading some things, 
my notifications are going to come in along the ticker display up here and I'll be able to read them while I'm still doing whatever it is that I'm researching here in the MathRef app. So I don't have to leave it to see what notifications are coming in. The ticker display will do that. That's especially great when you're in YouTube or you know, say you're in a game like Bloom Tower Defense or playing that ping pong game that I showed you guys in the 6P review. You don't need to leave your game. You don't need to leave your video. You'll see all of your notifications coming in along that secondary display. So overall, I think the secondary display is not a gimmick uh, for me anyway. I really like the idea of having my notifications come in along there when I'm in other apps. I also like the idea of having the favorite apps and the recent apps so that it helps me out with my multitasking. But it is something to keep in mind that because the height of the phone, it's such a tall phone, if you have small hands, you might not like it. You may want to turn it off. And of course, if you go into settings, you do have the option to turn off the secondary display. If you go into second screen, you can either choose to have it on when the screen is on, choose to have it on when the screen is off, or you can turn both of these off. You can see that I don't have it on when the screen is off. I just like my phone to be completely uh, blank. And of course, that's personal preference. A lot of people have said that it's even more useful to have the secondary screen on when your main screen's off. And I can see that, but I just prefer to have the entirely black screen. I did try it both ways and just happened to prefer it the other way around. All right, so the secondary screen, I think, was something that they, they pushed a lot and it actually was a huge success. So that's another one of the big features they pushed, which ended up being successful for the V10. Uh, the next thing is the software. And the software, of course, as you guys go back to my LG G4 review, uh, there was a lot of lag in UX 4.0 and the LG G4. And now I haven't got nearly as much lag on the V10, but I think that's mainly attributable to the uh, four gigabytes of RAM that they have in this phone and not necessarily to any software improvements that LG has made behind the scenes in UX 4.0. So you guys can see, I can open up just a ton of apps with no problem and I don't really have any lag switching between screens, doing whatever I'm doing. There's really no problem with lag on this phone. Scroll through the carousel really easily. But that being said, I'm not sure that has anything to do with the software because the software is mainly unchanged. You can see you sort of still got the same exact launcher. You got a lot of the same LG uh, first party apps installed like music. You got the LG Health app, a few others that I deleted. You got Quick Health, uh, all these various apps. And I've sort of kept this thing running the LG launcher. I, I refrained from installing Nova Launcher so I could get the stock experience. You've also sort of got a modified version of the settings. Doesn't look like stock Android at all. So UX 4.0 is a really pretty heavy skinned version of Android. A lot of manufacturers like Motorola are now trying to stay true to stock Android, which I find that I prefer a little more. Um, while LG and Samsung are still kind of doing their own thing. Um, at, my, at, at this point, I sort of feel like LG's skin is actually a little more laggy than even TouchWiz. Some people might disagree and call me a Samsung fanboy for that. But anyway, I, I found on the G4 a little more lag than I did on my S6 or my Note 5. So overall, I, I don't like the software experience that's on the uh, V10, mainly because it's so similar to the G4. They didn't really do much to change it. Uh, it's not a terrible software experience by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I just prefer if they would stick closer to stock Android. And I think in 2016, one of the big things that LG could do is try to tone down their skin. Uh, I definitely like some of the animations and things that they have, but they could make the sort of interface itself and the material design more aligned with what, we, uh, what Google's vision for Android is. I think that would make me and a lot of other people happy. But you might like their version of multitasking. Of course, you do have your multitasking there. You can open up to at the same time. You can also customize down here at the bottom your software buttons. You can see I put the multitasking button right there. You can have four software buttons. Features like that are great to have, but it's just that there's so many features on here. There's an overload of features, kind of like on Samsung's phones, where because of the overload of features that they have, that sort of makes it a difficult thing for them to accomplish. All right, so uh, let's get into the next feature, which is, of course, the camera. So overall, the software, just to sum it up, I like some of the features, and I mentioned a few of here at the bottom, multi-window, LG remote, and Q-slide. Those are all nice features for multitasking and also controlling your TV with the LG remote. Uh, but most of those are sort of uh, not additional options that everybody is going to use, and they could definitely tone down some of the first-party bloat, so to speak, in 2016. All right, so the next thing, of course, is the camera. And the camera is another one of the big selling features that LG touted when they announced this phone. And I've got a couple of different bullet points here about the camera. 
If we go into the camera app itself, I have it on the front facing camera. Let's turn it around really quick so we can look at some of these controls here. You can see right here, I've got it in manual mode for the camera itself. Let me bring something in here that we can actually have in the background. That might be easier. You guys can see I've got the ISO. The ISO is out of control here on manual mode. So let me turn that down a bit. Oops, hard to do behind the camera. There we go. So you can see there, you've got the manual controls on the LG V10. You can see that you've got all the same controls that you had with the LG G4 in terms of the still shots. You've got white balance, manual focus, ISO, et cetera, the shutter speed. But the real selling point here is the manual video mode, which I did use to actually shoot some of my videos. I did use this to shoot, I believe, the second edition of the Tech Essential Stocking Stuffers. You can see up here, you've got even sort of a mic monitor where you can monitor your audio coming into uh, each of the left and the right channels. You can control, you know, frames per second. You can control manual focus, white balance, ISO, et cetera, just like you would uh, in the still shot mode. So of course, if you're a photographer or aspiring videographer, the LG V10 is a really, really great camera to use in that particular case because you're gonna get manual control over everything. Now that's great if you are a aspiring photographer or videographer. I used this to shoot a video. I thought the quality was great. If you guys go back and look at my Essential Tech Stocking Stuffers number two, you can see the quality for yourself and see what you think. Um, and then, of course, they have two other modes which are for people who are not into adjusting all the settings. They've got auto mode here, of course. You can take a picture just by snapping a shot, you know, just by pressing the button. You can adjust, of course, just like on any other camera, you can adjust your point of focus by tapping the center, you know, and adjust your metering from tapping the center button. And then there's simple mode, which is even simpler. There's nothing to do but just tap and take a picture. Now, the only problem I've noticed with the LG V10's camera is that while it does really, really well if you're in manual mode and you want to, let's go into the gallery really quick. If you want to go in manual mode, it does really well. But if you do things in simple or auto, the quality is not really that great. So actually a couple of these photos here, it's kind of hard to tell in the video, but a couple of these photos I took are pretty dark overall in general. And it's just not a great experience if you take it in auto or simple mode compared to the Note 5 or the Nexus 6P. That's not to say the camera is bad. It's just that if you want to get great shots out of the V10, which you can probably get the best shots out of this camera and out of the LG G4 as any camera on the market uh, in terms of a smartphone, but you're gonna have to play with those manual settings. So if you're willing to put in that time, if that's something you're interested in, I would definitely say uh, that it's definitely the way to go. So I mentioned that in my notes here. If you're an aspiring videographer, photographer, this is definitely the Android phone for you because it's gonna give you all of those great options. The low light performance is excellent if you use manual controls, but the metering seems to be a little bit off in auto and simple mode on the LG V10. Uh, a few other things here. The color accuracy in the camera, so it's actually great, especially if you're using manual mode. Again, you get the lighting right and everything. Everything looks beautiful. The color reproduction on the camera is fantastic. I really have no complaints with that whatsoever. They did a great job just like they did on the LG G4. Uh, the optical image stabilization is good, but the uh, laser autofocus on this phone is not as quick as some of the other phones I have. The autofocus on the BlackBerry Priv is actually faster than the LG G the V10. Uh, but again, that's something that you might see T-Mobile fix in an upcoming software update. But as I said, I haven't gotten any updates, so I sort of have to review what I have now. Now, if we go back and talk really quick about the front-facing camera, so I talked about the rear camera, the video mode. Let's go back quickly and talk about the front-facing camera. So first, if we go back in here and just switch around the camera, as you can see there, facing me, so the front-facing camera has a couple of interesting uh, options. Namely, you've got these dual cameras here. So you can do some interesting things with that. Of course, here, you can turn up your beauty shot on the side here. You can also choose to shoot in multi-view. You can see here, you get multi-view. You get your one, two, and three views. And then you can set up those shots and sort of get a nice collage uh, shot if you want. So there's some nice little features that come from having the dual cameras on the front. And that's definitely something that I've found fun to play around with, of course. You can shoot, you know, one, two, two shots and then assemble that into, you know, each shot. That gives you a nice uh, look with the front-facing camera as well as, you know, what's it behind. So it's nice to 
get one shot and then you know you could shoot shot from the rear camera and it'll assemble it into one nice collage so there's some nice features here on the front facing camera that take advantage of this dual camera setup so anyway the front casing camera is a pretty solid little camera it's something that i've enjoyed quite a bit playing around with you also get this wide uh, wide frame so if you want to get a bunch of people in your selfie you can see you can get a whole bunch of people sort of take a group selfie and that also works really really well as well so all together i would say that the camera on the lg v10 from the front has a nice uh, set of features that if you're into selfies if you like to take a lot of group selfies if you like to play around with the uh, the depth uh, features on the dual camera setup that's going to be something that you'll enjoy from that point of view uh, it's definitely something for selfie lovers that's going to be a win for you. Um, the next thing, of course, sort of just to wrap up the camera, I think that this camera is great for two types of people. It's great for videographers and photography enthusiasts who sort of want to get the most out of their camera that's willing to play with the manual controls. And then it's also great for those of us who like to take a lot of selfies. As I mentioned with the dual camera setup, you can take these collage photos, you can take these group selfies with the wide angle uh, from the front facing camera all those are great little features that you're going to love if you love to take selfies so i recommend this to people who are into the selfie game and those who are really into playing with the manual controls in terms of the auto and the simple controls though i would still pick the note 5 the v10 uh, the note 5 the 6p or maybe even the blackberry priv uh, the next thing of course is the actual battery life on the v10 now just quickly I had decent battery life, about three to 3.5 hours screen on time. That's definitely not the best battery life I've gotten on a flagship though. I typically average maybe four, and a half, maybe four to four and a half on the Note 5 and the 6P. Uh, this of course does have the removable back so you can pull it off and you have your battery back there. That's a spare battery, which is great. Uh, so you can go from zero to 100 in a second. So that's really not a huge issue. This phone also charges faster probably than any of my other flagships. So in that sense, of course, it's great because you don't have to worry about needing to top up. You can top up really quickly. So the battery life, while it's not the greatest on the V10, it does have the removable battery and it does charge super fast, uh, which makes it sort of a non-issue non -issue for me, even though I really got about three and a half hours screen on time uh, maximum on this phone, which is actually pretty average, uh, below average perhaps for me. Uh, the performance, the V10 definitely uh, has good performance. I didn't notice any drop frames when playing games or doing anything like that. The only thing I did notice is when I go in to play games, like I played a lot of Balloon Tower Defense on this particular phone. Also played some of the other game I showed you guys last time, Table Tennis Touch. But when I did play these games for a long period of time, I noticed that I would get uh, overheating. Well, not overheating, but I would get a relatively warm phone along the metal sides and the back compared to the Nexus 6P and the Note 5 is surprising because of course the LG V10 is running the Snapdragon 808. So while there was no problem sort of navigating around, there's no lag playing any of the games, I did notice some heating issues when playing for an hour or two, which I didn't get on the 6P, uh, which again is really weird because the 6P has the 810 and this has the 808. But other than that, not a lot of lag. I think the four gigabytes of RAM that LG put in here really helped uh, the UX 4.0 interface as I mentioned earlier. Uh, get less lag than it had on the LG G4. Uh, so I didn't have any problems with moving around. I also didn't have any drop frames when playing games. I just noted a little bit of heating issues. Um, and then of course the other thing that I noticed is the quick uh, launch for the camera can be a little slow to launch. So you have this quick launch here from, see if I can, from the screen, from your home screen, the quick launch, oops, I'm sorry, swiping the wrong way. So the quick launch from the camera, it can be a little slow to load. You guys can see it there. You guys sort of saw how slow the quick launch is to load from the home screen. That's a little bit slower than the Note 5, a little bit slower than the other phones that have this feature. Not a huge deal, but it's another thing I noticed. And that's something that LG could essentially improve via software update and definitely work on for their software in 2016. So performance, it's good for the 808, no huge problems. Uh, but I did notice some heating issues, which is a little weird, admittedly. Uh, but I'm reporting the issues that I had in using the phone. Uh, now we'll come to one of the worst problems I had with the V10 and that's the fingerprint scanner. You guys have probably seen throughout the video, sometimes the fingerprint scanner on this thing will work, sometimes it won't work great. The other bad thing is when you actually turn, you have to turn the screen on before you use the fingerprint scanner. So you can't just put your finger on there with like with the 6P and it opens up. 
I gotta actually press the button to turn the screen on, then unlock it with my finger. That's annoying. Uh, in addition, as I mentioned earlier, the fingerprint scanner for me still barely works at all if I have a case on it. So if I put a case on this phone, I showed this in another video, but if I put a case on it, you can see, fingerprint scanner barely works. I'm not doing anything different than I was when I had the case off. So I've heard a lot of tips and tricks. I even gave some in a video about how to improve it. But the bottom line is, it should work the same with the case on as it does with the case off. I know not everybody wants to use a case with a rugged phone like this, but at the end of the day, you should have that option if you want to. Um, overall though, with or without a case, the fingerprint scanner on this phone, I feel like, is one of the least accurate and quick fingerprint scanners I've had, uh, despite whether the case is on or off. It's not nearly at the level of the uh, iPhone 6S Plus, the Note 5, or the Nexus 6P. So I would say, hopefully T-Mobile will push the update, as I mentioned, and get this fixed. Um, and hopefully it improves the speed and accuracy, as some AT&T users have mentioned. But for now, this is still a huge problem. Um, having it on the back is nice. It still has the same issue that I mentioned with the 6P. If it's on the table, now you can't use your fingerprint scanner. you got to pick it up. So if you sit at a desk all day, that might be a problem. But otherwise, they just need to fix the speed and accuracy because it hasn't been an enjoyable experience at all. All right, so just to wrap up here with some odds and ends and the pricing, uh, a couple other features that are killer features on here, of course, the removable battery, the expandable memory. Those are things that no other flagship has, so that's a big reason to get this phone. The other thing I mentioned, the Hi-Fi audio, the Hi-Fi DAC that's in here, sounds amazing. If you listen to this with any headphones, it's going to improve uh, your audio experience. And if you have a really good set of headphones, it's going to make the experience just unbelievable for you. So I would say the iFi DAC is one of the big selling features. I listen to this with some Sennheiser and Audio-Technica, even some of my Sennheiser earbuds, and it just sounds amazing. It's like you have a portable DAC, you know, plugged into your actual earphones itself, uh, just inside the phone. So it's sort of, if you're a big audio fan, if you're an audiophile, you're going to love the LG V10. It would definitely be a good phone to get for that particular reason. So uh, the other odds and ends, let's see what else I had here. I did have a few Wi-Fi connectivity issues. Uh, this is something that other people online have reported, and I'm hoping that T-Mobile will fix that in a software update. Sort of sometimes the Wi-Fi will not refresh, uh, it won't connect to refresh apps like Instagram or Twitter, uh, and sometimes it'll go out intermittently, but it's not a huge deal. It's just a minor inconvenience that I've noticed. So overall, the bottom line for this phone, this phone is a good value at $599, I think. It's not a bad deal, but at the end of the day, there are still two other phones that overall I would recommend to the average consumer over this one. That's the Note 5 and the 6P, possibly the BlackBerry Priv, but kind of similar to the BlackBerry Priv, the V10, sort of a niche phone for a couple different types of people. If you want a really rugged phone that you don't have to worry about having a case on, this might be the phone for you. If you want the manual controls on the uh, actual video and uh, still shots, this might be the phone for you if you're an aspiring photographer or videographer. If you want the great Hi-Fi audio DAC, if you're an audiophile, this might be the phone for you, but remember the speaker on here is pretty much trash. But if you're a big audiophile, you listen to a lot of music with headphones, this might be the phone for you to get. So all of the features that LG touted for this phone that are special, the Hi-Fi DAC, the second screen, the manual video, um, the rugged design, those are all things that they did incredibly well I still think that if I were recommending a phone to the average Android user, someone who's just looking to break into Android or who wants the best overall Android phone, I would recommend the 6P or the Note 5 because they do so much better in things like battery life, uh, overall user experience, fingerprint scanner is better, uh, just not as annoying as an experience uh, for me as I had with the V10. But if you want some of these niche features, this is a great value uh, at $599 unlocked or if you get it on a payment plan, I can definitely recommend it if you're getting it for the right reasons. All right, guys, that's been my full review of the LG V10. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Also, drop any questions you have for me in the comments below. I'll be happy to get back to those to you, for you guys as soon as possible. Definitely check out news.highonandroid.doketechdaily.com. My Google Plus and Twitter links in the description if you guys want to follow me and get the latest video updates, see what I'm up to. I appreciate you guys checking out the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.